Hi, thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be sharing five tips on how to create a beautiful sound while playing in the cello's upper register. Before I begin, this tutorial is intended for students who have already learned thumb position and just want to improve their skills. And if you don't know what thumb position is, it's whenever we take our thumb and we place it on the top of our fingerboard, and we usually do this whenever we're playing higher notes on the cello. That being said, even if you are a beginner and thumb position seems like a long way off, you can still watch this video and become familiar with the concepts that you will inevitably encounter. Tip number one, check your instrument's action. Action is the distance between the strings and the fingerboard, and you can measure the action by placing a small ruler right at the edge of the fingerboard. Now, before I actually show you how to check and tell you what the measurements should approximately be, let me explain why it's so important to do this. If the action on your instrument is too high, you are at risk for injury. Injuries such as tendinitis or even permanent nerve damage, and that is not something that you want to experience. Um, and not only do you not want to hurt yourself, but uh, whenever you are in pain physically, that usually comes through in your playing. So if you're in pain, you're likely gonna sound like you're in pain. For this tutorial, I contacted my friend, Nicholas Burak, who owns a string shop in Arlington, Texas, and asked for his professional advice on this topic. The following is what he shared with me, and I'm gonna include the pictures that he sent as visual references. So first off, make sure that you are using a metric ruler that starts right at the edge. Some rulers have a little space before the metric starts, and that's gonna throw off your measurement. Lay your instrument flat so that the C string, your lowest string is closest to you. Place your ruler against the A string within the last inch of the fingerboard, and as you can see in this image, the string height is 5 millimeters. For the A string, an average medium height would be around 5 millimeters, low would be 4 to 4.5, and, and high would be 6 to 6.5. Six One thing Nick did mention about the 4 to 4.5 territory is that if lower to that height, you could potentially run into a buzzing kind of sound. Now let's go over to your C string. The average height for the C string is 7.5 millimeters. 6 will be way too low. You would run into that buzzing issue. Uh, so setting the string between 7 and 8 millimeters is industry standard. Keep in mind that the action does fluctuate slightly according to the weather. So humidity will cause the strings to be higher and dryness or cold weather causes the strings to be lower. One more thing to keep in mind for this topic, if the fingerboard is warped or if it has a very high amount of concavity, it's what luthiers call scoop, uh, what can happen is that the strings will feel artificially higher regardless of having a good measurement near the end of the fingerboard. So if that's something you think might be happening, definitely get it looked at. So to conclude this first topic of discussion, if you check the measurement and you find that it is over six and a half millimeters, or if you're just having trouble pressing the strings down even at a normal medium height, or if you are experiencing a buzzing sound or a very weak sound, then take your instrument to the luthier, have them look at it and work with them to achieve the ideal feel and sound. Now let's move on to tip number two. Okay, tip number two. As you move your left hand higher, move your bow closer to the bridge. The different locations of bow placement between the edge of the fingerboard and the bridge are what we call points of contact or contact points. You can divide this landscape into five contact points. Contact point five is here, here's four, three is roughly in the middle, here's two, and then one is about as close to the bridge as you can play before your tone starts to crack. Now, for playing in the instrument's upper register, the further our left hand moves towards the bridge, the shorter the length of the vibrating string becomes. If we don't move our bow closer to the bridge to compensate for this, our sound goes dead. Just for a moment, pause this video and conduct an experiment. Find your high D and play using your full bow at the fingerboard. Now, play using your full bow closer to the bridge. Even without worrying too much about speed and pressure, you will definitely notice a difference in tone quality. So now that we've proved the importance of my second tip, let's pay attention to speed and pressure. Proper bow technique revolves around the balance of these three things. Point of contact, which we just covered, speed, and pressure. In general, the bow should be fast and light when you're playing closer to the fingerboard, and it should be slower and heavier when you're playing closer to the bridge. I'm simplifying a concept that musicians spend years learning to apply to their instrument, so don't get frustrated. It's gonna take a long time, and in the meantime, just enjoy the process and enjoy discovering the nuances of playing a stringed instrument. 
Let's find that high D again. Move the bow, using a full bow, back and forth, experimenting with contact point, speed, and pressure. Do that until you are satisfied. Once you are happy with your tone, keep producing that same tone quality for at least twice the amount of time that you spent experimenting. You want to solidify in your muscle memory the exact balance that you discovered. This is a great warm up, by the way. I actually like to start my day off sometimes by doing this exercise on all of my open strings, going through each of the five contact points on those open strings. To summarize and generalize, when you are playing high notes on the cello, move your bow closer to the bridge, slow your bow speed, speed, add a little pressure, and most importantly, listen. Listen closely and feel it out. Listen for that rich, expressive tone quality, and then let your body intuitively lean into that. Tip number three, keep your thumb on the string for beautiful vibrato. Having a beautiful vibrato in thumb position has a lot to do with keeping the thumb on the string. Some cellists take their thumb off the string to achieve an extra wide vibrato, but let me share with you some of the benefits of leaving your thumb down. First of all, I've found that it helps to keep the pitch stable while the other finger is free to achieve this beautiful wide vibrato. It grounds you in the exact place that you want to be on the fingerboard. Secondly, it serves as the pivot point for the vibrato motion, which is very important for the overall balance of the hand. And thirdly, I find that it keeps the vibrato from getting out of control in terms of width. Because the pitches are so close together the higher you go, an overly wide vibrato can end up sounding comically wide. Simply said, the stability that comes from leaving your thumb down allows the rest of your hand to relax and produce an in-tune and beautiful vibrato. As you can see here, my thumb is relaxed but grounded, my other fingers are also very relaxed, and my first finger has some bounce to it. Instead of focusing on having an extra wide vibrato, I'm keeping my thumb down and I'm focusing on having a relaxed and controlled vibrato. If you decide to try this as well, I think you'll find that your vibrato will be plenty wide and with that extra control, you'll have access to an entire range of vibrato widths and speeds for all of the different characters and moods you'll be wanting to portray and produce. Tip number four, relax the left hand. I've already talked about how allowing the thumb to come off the string can cause tension, but there are also some other contributors to tension that I should address. Contributor number one. As I mentioned before, the intervals become smaller the further your left hand climbs towards the bridge. This decreasing amount of space can make your hand feel crunched, claustrophobic, and tight. Contributor number two, also because of the shrinking intervals, playing in tune becomes more difficult, and stressing about pitch accuracy is definitely going to add to that left hand tension. Contributor number three, the closer you get towards the bridge, the more distance there is between the string and the fingerboard, which makes it more difficult to press the string down regardless of the instrument's action. Let me address each of these issues one at a time. Issue number one, the decreasing space causes your left hand to feel claustrophobic. This actually has a very simple solution. All you have to do is give your fingers some space by lifting whichever fingers aren't playing out of the way. Addressing issue number two, stressing about pitch accuracy. I would try practicing pitch accuracy and left hand relaxation separately. Of course, you want to practice playing in tune, but sometimes you just need to put that to the side while you focus on staying relaxed. That's okay. Issue number three, tension from pressing the string. If your strings are at a healthy height, which we talked about in tip number one, tension is probably being caused by pressing without the rebound movement of release. The main thing you need to know is that after that initial strike, continuing to press the string down very firmly is unnecessary and just not a good idea. This brings me to my final tip, tip number five, become comfortable reading in tenor and treble class. Unless the passage is notated in bass clef with an accompanying 8VA, a passage played in the instrument's high range will be written using the tenor and treble clefs. Tenor clef encompasses notes that are a little lower but still high for the cello, and treble clef is used for the extremely high notes, and there is definitely some overlap. If you aren't comfortable reading in these clefs, it will be very difficult to focus on bow technique, vibrato, and relaxation. Of course, until you are comfortable reading in these clefs, you can always focus on bow technique, vibrato, and relaxation by practicing your scales or just by playing by ear. In the beginning, I would actually make a point to separate sight reading practice and technique work until you are ready to combine the two. A sheet music resource to consider is the Schroeder 170 Etudes for Violoncello, Volume 1, which includes etudes in thumb position. At a higher level of playing, popper etudes are a great resource for building your thumb position proficiency. All right, one last summary. Tip number one, check your instrument's action. Tip number two, as you move your left hand higher, move your bow closer to the bridge. 
Tip number three, keep your thumb on the string for beautiful vibrato. Tip number four, relax the left hand. And tip number five, become comfortable reading in tenor and treble clefs. All right, that is all that I have for today's video. I hope that you find it to be helpful and thank you for watching.